Hey everybody, it's Pastor Bruce. I've got some really cool things I want to share today, as well as I just wanted to say up front that I pray at the end of all of my live streams. And in fact, I wanted to pray at the beginning this time because you may not make it till the end. You may not be able to listen to the entire thing. So let me go ahead and pray as we're booting up here. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that anybody who's joining me today that's listening is going to feel your presence. I pray that they would understand your goodness towards them. That they would know, according to Ephesians 3, the width, length, depth, and height of your love. I pray, God, that they would be able to see how kind you are through tangible acts of kindness in their hearts. That they would be able to see all of the ways that you're working, even behind the scenes, in things that you're doing for them. I pray, God, that you'd also help them to be able to um, encounter you, even in the mundane things. You know, I'm just playing a game, just hanging out, Lord. I pray that they would be able to do that with you, that they would feel your presence, even in the mundane things of life, that they'd sense that you are near, that you love them, and that you're good. In Jesus' name. Well, guys, uh, one really cool thing that I wanted to share... Oh, my hammer broke. Oh, I got some flint. It says, strike it with a metallic weapon to generate a spark. It breaks after one use, but it can create a long-lasting flame. Fuse attack power, though. I wonder what happens if I fuse it. Hmm. Anyway, I wanted to share an epiphany that I had. Because I was driving and just kind of... Uh, I was thinking about the way that everyone was talking about peace and safety during COVID-19. And everyone kept saying, you know, the same propaganda over and over. Nobody's safe unless everyone's safe. They were saying things like, you have to get the vaccine or else, you know, you're not going to keep everyone safe and stuff like that. What is that? What did I just do there? I hope I didn't kill a good guy. Bubble gem. A strange crystal left by defeated bubble frogs. Is that how you pronounce it? Bubble? In caves. It's eerie blue glow may entice you to collect even more. Huh. I wonder if that's going to be like a currency. Anyway, you know, during COVID-19, the same propaganda was being spread over and over and over. It kept on being spoken by every single news outlet. It was like, you have to get the vaccine. You have to get this vaccine over and over. Peace and safety. Peace and safety. Well, in Thessalonians 5, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, I believe it is, it says that while everyone is saying peace and safety, suddenly destruction will come upon them. And it talks as if, like, the way I originally read that verse is there's going to be actual peace and safety for some amount of time where everyone has a false sense of security and they just, you know, kind of think, oh, nothing to worry about, nothing to prepare for. And there we go. Uh, stupid fix. Now I got one of these. You know, I kept thinking of that verse in terms of, um, you know, everyone's going to be lulled into a false sense of security. They're not going to be prepared. They're not going to be awake. They're going to be taken by surprise. And I think that there could be some of that going on. But I actually believe that we're going to see the Antichrist and many, many people, whether it's average citizens, government officials... Maybe even, you know, the populace, you know, uh, the media for sure is going to be in on it. Everyone's going to be crying out for peace and safety. I don't think it's just going to be that there is actual peace happening necessarily. But because of conflict and because of bad things that are going on, the Antichrist is going to claim if you want peace and safety, then you have to give me more powers. You have to give me more... Um, emergency authority, emergency powers. You have to, you know, give me your freedoms, turn in your um, your rights. You know, he's going to say you have to submit 
and give up your guns, give up your bodily autonomy, give up whatever. Hey, I finally found a shirt. <laughs> Old-fashioned upper body wear. It's got some holes, but the soft cloth feels good to the touch. It's hard to keep it wrinkle-free. Man, oh man. That looks a lot better, doesn't it? Notice that it does happen to still show off that gruesome arm. His uh, nasty claw arm. Did I come all the way through the mountain? All right. So, that's a cool view. I wonder if that's a hole. Yeah, I think it is. That is really cool. What are these guys up to? Hello? The rafts for crossing to the other side are broken. Transportation is on hold indefinitely. This is ordinarily where we send resources across the river. The only silver lining is that the Zonai devices are undamaged. Zonai devices? Ah, it seems you do not know of the Zonai devices. There are necessities around here. Allow me to explain. The green thing is called a Zonai device. The one you see here is a fan. You can produce wind on demand by striking it. They are self-evidently useful. We have a variety of Zonai devices for multitudinous purposes. Using Zonai devices does require energy. An external energy cell will be necessary in your case. Ah, you have one already. That is a relief. But perhaps a refresher explanation is in order. An energy cell stores the energy required to use Zonai devices. The energy will replenish while Zonai devices are not in use. Its capacity is not unlimited. Use the energy contained within wisely. Otherwise, you may run out at an inopportune moment. Pardon the long explanation. It does not change our need for a raft. Zonai devices are extremely useful. Think creatively. You may find many ways to employ them. So I guess I'm going to build my first little uh, fan raft. Um, let's see. So I'll rebuild that for those guys. While I'm doing that, I'm going to finish my point. Sorry. <laughs> Part of the whole deal here with uh, me. Ah, oh, we have may have need of these parts. There are more materials near the water available for your use. So I can't use that? Okay. Anyway, uh, like I said, I used to believe that the verse referred to, you know, there being an actual safety. Like some real safety where people are lulled into a false sense of security and they don't see a need to prepare and to you know do what's right you know they're kind of lethargic or asleep so to speak now i'm thinking more and more that this has to do with society the media the antichrist telling people you have to abide by my new tyrannical authority or else you won't have peace and safety so he promises it but I don't know man he might immediately get rid of the actual peace and safety I don't know that there's going to be an actual time period where people have for real peace I think it could be that he creates some sort of peace treaty because there's a seven-year covenant that he makes with the people, meaning Israel. And in the midst of that covenant, which doesn't have to mean the exact middle, three and a half years, it could mean just sometime in the midst, like, you know, year three or year, you know, three and nine months. But sometime around that period, he's going to go full tyrant mode he's gonna you know attack israel he's gonna start persecuting the church i did figure out how to do this a little better whoops Let's 
Let's put it there. What do you guys think of my uh, epiphany? I mean, to me, it's like, this is a big deal. I don't know if I'm doing a good job explaining it. Because there's kind of a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of um, background to the end times and the study of the end times that I'm coming, to, coming from. So I don't know if it makes sense why that's such a big deal for me to think of it this way. But I think the modern correlation is what really stood out to me. Over and over again, we've been seeing examples where people are saying, peace and safety, peace and safety. And I'm not just trying to pick on COVID-19 like it's the one and only time that it's happened or the one and only problem but it is a really big precursor I think ah can I get that fish got it ancient arowana a lively fish that hasn't changed much since ancient times it's nutritious meat can restore a bit of health sounds like it's kind of just the regular old bass high real bass How in the world can I swim with this giant monstrosity strapped to my back? <laughs> I just can't get over that. Let me show this to those guys. Oh, he said danger. Bruh. Uh, what are you doing, bro? What happened to my thing? Wait a minute. Seven o'clock, the bell rang, and they kind of went into sleep mode. Huh. I thought I'd show that to him and he'd be happy about it, but let me talk to homeboy. Super Saiyan 3 with the long Sonic here. Mm. The steward constructs were the first to be built. After that, we crafted others suited for different roles, culinary constructs, maker constructs. You'll find all sorts of them still active in this place. Some became so skilled within their specialties that they surpassed us. We began to learn from them instead. You should take time to talk to them. They can teach you many things. You might not know that. I don't know if those would have been good for construction, but I kind of want some arrows and such. Better not fall down there. Hmm. Was this always a floating island, or did this break away from the mainland? That would be good to know. Well. I guess I'll just go ahead and put her in the water. First, I need to rotate. This. Oh, wrong way. Okay. Wait. Go back. I guess that stops them. Can I move them while I'm on them? Indeed I can. So I'm trying to unstick it now. I'm going to rotate a little more. No! Oh. That's not what I wanted. Ah, oh, come on. <laughs> That's no good. Alright, let's try this one more time. There we go. Stick. Now this guy. Gotta do the same thing. This feels a little tedious to me. And the reason I feel that way is because... It's actually not convenient for me to do this. Maybe it'll get easier for me, but I'm also thinking in terms of like, would this be entertaining to watch? And I don't think it is. 
so I apologize guys, but hopefully I'll get better at it and figure out how to do it quicker and you won't have to take so long to watch me. I talk during the night time? Oh, are you going this direction? It is very late to be traveling. Not that late. It's 7 o'clock, dude. <laughs> the mountain path is especially rugged. You must take your environment into account when, a tra when traveling. I have developed guidelines for traveling the mountain path. Shall I tell you them? Very well. Fire is a crucial tool in traveling the mountain path. Fire can be used either to cook or to warm yourself. Uh, I think I already know all this, so in case this is your first time watching, uh, I apologize, but I'm kind of skipping some of the tutorial because this is really similar, if not identical, from Breath of the Wild, and I am familiar with that already, but I guess there's going to be some cold areas up here. I should try to cook some sort of elixir. But let me see what's in my stuff. In my inventory. I need to put some firewood down. If I'm going to do that. Alright, my inventory includes fire fruit, generates heat when struck. Huh. I don't think that's what I'm looking for. Giant bright bloom seed. A seed that's found underground. When struck, it will take root and bloom. Huh. That's cool. So I can make light in a dark dungeon. Alright. Yeah, I don't think I've got what I need. In order to make like a warming potion. I'm guessing I'm going to hit some cold air up here, though. Otherwise, they wouldn't have mentioned all that. What's that noise? Oh, I heard the music. <laughs> I guess it was just for that guy. Whoops. Huh. <laughs> I guess I should have done that when I wasn't standing right on top of it. You know, it just occurred to me, that is like a broken down one of those machines. That's kind of sad. Oh, look. got ourselves another Korok puzzle. Whoops. I don't want to throw this. There we go. What do you guys think of the whole Target controversy? I know every company is corrupt. I realize that you can't boycott everyone that you have a problem with because... There's hardly anyone who's legit, like, good and wholesome. But Target really has taken it a little far, don't you think? Like, they hired the Satanist, and the Satanist did a bunch of, like, LGBT stuff. And they're targeting children, pun intended. So, it's really discouraging, you know? Like, if it was just the adults... That'd be one thing. It'd be bad. It'd be immoral. But, you know, adults can kind of make up their own mind. Children are so impressionable. Dude, Jesus said it would be better to have a millstone tied around your neck and thrown in the ocean than to lead a child astray. And here Target is targeting kids 
with sexual orientation messaging when kids aren't even supposed to be sexual in the first place. That's one of the biggest problems with the LGBT movement is not that there's a diverse group of people or they have a different, you know, gender preference or whatever. That's it's like they're they're sexualizing children. There's no way around it. It always goes back to the children. I just can't get over it because, man, we're supposed to protect kids. I'm telling you, God is not happy with that. People want to talk like, oh, Jesus, he loves everybody. He's just some hippie. God is love, 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 love. And what they mean by that is tolerance, acceptance, never any kind of judgment or whatever. But God is a good judge. I'm going to tell you something, man. God will not tolerate hurting children. He will not tolerate sexualizing children, leading them into sin. It's not just sin because like the Bible prohibits it. It's perversion. It's like this is a level of perversion that's well beyond, you know, any kind of just normal temptation or sin or something that somebody might come across. It's life alteringly bad. If you take a kid, I mean, let's call it a nine, 10 year old, 11 year old, pre-puberty, you give puberty blockers, you're transforming their entire life from that point forward. And you're gonna ruin their development. And it's all done in the name of, I don't know what, tolerance. It's all done in, in this fake civil rights type attitude, as if the new civil rights movement is all about sexualization and not, you know, skin color. <laughs> Whoa, did he just hit me with some wind? Wow, this guy's pretty rowdy. I hate these two-handed weapons. Ah, oh, I died. Yeah, two-handed weapons are too slow for me. As you can tell, I am not like some major battle star guy. Like, I'm not the quickest on my feet, and my skills with fighting are lackluster. Ah, oh, I gotta start all the way back down here. That stinks. getting beat up by slimes you know slimes actually I think were in Zelda 1 yes they were they were in Zelda 1 in the dungeons you would kill a big one it would split into like three small ones and then I remember them in Zelda 2 they're pretty prominent they seemed and then I don't remember if they were in the link to the past I do remember them in Ocarina of Time Anyway, I want to change this thing out. What is this? Board Guster. I think that might, like... Yeah, this is much better. Now I've got my shield. Yeah, see? That's a lot better. Ooh. That wind. Oh, Fury Rush. That's the first time I've tried that. Nice. Good, I got myself a treasure chest. So... I just think Target, for example, yes, there's a million other bad companies, but 
this bad company chose to try to sexualize and target kids. I, I just, man, I fear for that. I fear for them, dude. I am telling you. It is, it's not okay. Uh, let me drop this. I'll pick up this other guy. I'm just really thinking, like... I hope that what happened to Bud Light happens to Target. <laughs> I really do. And it's kind of too bad that Target happens to be the one, you know, in the hot seat at the moment. But if people were to boycott Target, they might it might send a message to other companies to quit doing this woke nonsense, quit sexualizing kids, you know, introducing them, again, not just to something the Bible happens to prohibit, like, okay, that's a Christian thing, but like, this is something I think every culture, every religion, every person, every citizen should and can agree upon, because it's not just a religious thing. It's like, dude, you, you cannot do this to kids. You know, I talked about this a little bit yesterday when I was talking about gender dysphoria and how, like, my goal is to protect and help not just to judge and control and tell people, you can't do this, you can't do that. I care about children. I've got children of my own. Ah, oh, you know what? I think I should use a minecart. Well, I go on foot when you can just pick up one of these guys. <laughs> This to be back. So this right here. I will say I've been seeing footage of people on the left, like even transgender people, who are saying, "Yeah, we've taken it too far." Yeah, you know, the left is really kind of gone too far. things I'm worried about, though, is... Let's see what this guy says first. You'll need a light in order to proceed. Do you have any blight? Yes. Uh, sorry I'm not reading it out. It's actually easier for me to just skim and read in my head. I am posted here to provide a reminder to bring bright, bright bloom seeds. By the way, did you know bright blooms require a stimulus to blossom? Striking the seed or attaching it to an arrow will cause it to activate on impact. Ooh. So, if I attach to an arrow, that could be pretty cool. It'll be like when um, Hawkeye shot that light on the end of his arrow down the hallway. Do you remember that? And he saw that the Outrider monsters were coming down the sewer when he was uh, trying to take the Infinity Gauntlet, you know, outside of the kind of sewer level of um, the Avengers. Ah, I thought that might happen. Well, doggone. That was not very sturdy, was it? There we go. What's this guy? Zonite, zonite, an unusual mineral that has many purposes. Ancients extracted energy from it and refined it for the crafting of weapons and armors. That sounds cool. I would like to collect a lot of those. I forgot what I was saying. It is distracting when I'm in the middle of playing. 
I wonder if these things respawn. to farm some of this stuff here. I like the money noise it makes. Just like the cash register. Ching ching. Alright, so 7 in the morning. I guess there's a 12 hour shift, maybe? Well, it seems like I've gotten a lot more use out of this thing before it busted. That's good. Hmm? Apologies for not noticing you. I was focused on processing zone night T. How do you pronounce that? Oh, are you unfamiliar with it? This is the zonite I mentioned. It is a unique mat uh, mineral that can be mined for beneath, far beneath the land below. There are trace deposits of it on this island as well, but they are limited to this cave. Our society flourished by processing this substance into other materials. Processing? Smelting it in a furnace, thereby converted into materials with useful properties. A few such materials will be ready for your review shortly. Wait one moment. Maybe I can buy something? Zonite technology is typically powered by zonite charges. These occasionally solidify and form noses, known as crystallized charges, converting zonite into other useful materials. In this way, is called processing. Crystallized charges solidify form. Mainly use them as raw material in the construction of energy cells. Can I take these? Thirty pieces of zone. Oh, do I have that? I do have that. Should I get them? Hmm. Zone I charge. I wonder how many of these I'm gonna need. I've been getting those, I haven't been getting these, so I'm gonna buy some. It's a deal. Basically, he said, don't steal my zonite. Ah. Thought it might break. What else do I have? Let's see if this will... Took a lot of hits. Your behavior is a threat. All right, buddy. Sorry about that. This cave previously had ample resources. It is gradually yielding less and less. That's why I require support, but my requests have so far gone unanswered. I must therefore continue to mine. It's like the Wally kind of thing, you know? Whatever this culture was, they disappeared and... Ah, I have not given permission to take those. Could it be that you have forgotten to bring Zonai capsules? What are those? You have forgotten yours, or perhaps you may not even know what I mean. Convenient means of carrying portable Zonai devices. I'll lend you a few spares. That's good. Fan times three. 
That's really useful. This makes me think of Legos. So, I have to be careful when I choose to use them. So glad I got a shirt, finally. Looks like I might just want to take a ride. Is there a fan? Where can I get a fan? I don't want to use up the one of the things he just gave me. Yeah, I was just, uh, I think of what I was saying earlier is I hope that <laughs> Target goes the way of Bud Light. Not because I'm a bigot, not because I think all oh, those people need to get comeuppance or something. I'm not about that. I'm not into comeuppance. In other words, you know, like, people got what's coming to them. I, I'm not into that. That kind of revenge type stuff, that doesn't teach anybody anything. It doesn't ha help them to repent or grow as people or get closer to God. It doesn't help anybody. So, the whole thing is, I do want people to change their minds. I want Target, as a company, to change its mind. Or at least whoever needs to change their mind personally, at an individual level, I wish they would, you know? But, the thing is, if we boycotted Target, and then they did change their mind, like, hey, we shouldn't do this stuff. Wouldn't it just be a business decision? Wouldn't it simply be, oh yeah, we lost money, and we want to make money. And we're just as greedy as ever. And we don't really care about any of this stuff, for the moral principle of it. So, we're just trying to appease people. And then they, you know, appease conservatives by... You know, doing whatever, um, changing whatever they need to change, but it's not a real repentance. Oh man, that didn't work very well, did it? Whoops. Okay, let's try this. Whoops. Catch it the right thing. Yeah. Let's -a go. That's pretty cool. Now I'm going to the top of this place. I probably could have climbed if I just went straight up the wall, but maybe not. Hey, buddy. Super Saiyan 3 Llama. The time bell that sounds from the Temple of Time rings at a set time each morning and evening, 7 o'clock. Along with the constructs, we woke to the sound of the bell. When we heard it in the evening, we knew it was time to rest. Hmm. Still, that's not really bedtime. It also played its part in our traditional ceremonies. In a way, it was this place's beating heart. The sight of the temple and the sound of the bell stir fond memories in me. Cool, man. But are you a ghost? Like, are you dead? Alright, I just gotta say it. I gotta say it. I'll probably reiterate this in some other episode. But, in real life, ghosts are demons impersonating other people. They're just demons pretending to be a loved one that passed away. They may do a really good job impersonating the loved one. They may know things the loved one knew. And they may know secrets the loved one didn't tell anybody because they're demons. They're in the spiritual world around us. They can see things. They know things. And so, just to be clear, I'm still playing the game. It's not like a deal breaker for me here. But in real life, ghosts are demons. Don't let anybody tell you anything different. 
buddy. Device dispenser operation confirmed. On track to meet today's Zonai capsule production target. Oh, do you want to use the device dispenser? Yeah, man. I have nearly met my target. You are welcome to use it. Resources are to accept are things such as construct horns and Zonai charges. You can process resources that you hold by dropping them into the receptacle. It is similar to using a cooking pot. So, do I put them in here? Or do I put them up there? Ah, I guess I can't really climb that. Maybe I put stuff in here. Well, let's see. Let's hold that. And why not? Let's hold one of those. <clears throat> what did he give me? Oh. One of each. What is this? Portable pot. Oh, that's cool. And a fan. Another fan. I'm sure I'll come back to that and get a few things later. <laughs> Can't get over this music. It's so forlorn. I need to reach my friend. Ah, oh, this guy. You know what? Hmm. I just don't want to bother doing that right now. So I'm going to save. And I prayed at the beginning, but if you made it this far and you've heard a couple rants from me, I'm going to pray for you again. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for everybody who's uh, made it this far to the end. I just pray once again you'd shower your affections on them. Let them know how good you are. Let them see your goodness in tangible ways. If there's someone that needs healing at the moment, I pray, God, that you would bring physical healing. If they're dealing with depression or loneliness or some other emotional burden, I pray, God, you'd heal that as well. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, hit the like, subscribe button, and uh, you know, share the channel with a friend or two. I think hanging out can be a really fun way of chatting about Bible stuff, spiritual stuff. And it can actually be a way to uh, learn. And I think playing the game while we're doing it is pretty fun. So I do hope you'll join us again next time. Won't you come?